It's easy for me to preach high and mighty business management gospel that all operations should be forecasting all the time in the short, medium and long term. La 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 la. By the way, they should. But the accuracy of a forecast, even if done really well with all the possible available information, is sometimes just not that great, or frankly, only a tad better than a guess. We need to make a forecast and also know how forecastable certain things are in order to be able to give ourselves some kind of confidence range on our various forecasts. The business decisions made based on certain forecasts needs to be in perspective of how secure or plausible those forecasts are and, and the reliability that it's possible to get from a good forecast if it's done well. The kind of decisions we might commit to making based on information such as we will definitely need to make and sell 50 cars per week every week for the next year is very different from our best estimate is that there could be the possibility to sell and therefore make between 10 and 200 cars per week next year, probably with an average of about 50. Those are very different forecasts. Some things simply cannot be accurately forecasted, even with all the data and all the best methods. So what makes something possible to reliably forecast, versus only possible to forecast with a very big uncertainty margin? For example, short-term domestic water consumption for a town can be predictably forecast. The same with the number of cancer patients across a country next year. Maybe you can forecast both of these, you really can, within a few percent. But at the other extreme, some things are super difficult and unreliable to forecast, such as sales of a brand new techno gadget or demand for a certain cryptocurrency. But when assessing the things in your business that you need to forecast, what general factors determine how forecastable something is. Here's the list. Number one, lots of available historical data. Number two, how relevant or similar the past is to the future. Number three, how well we understand the factors that contribute to it. And number four, whether forecasting affects the thing that we're trying to forecast. I'm sure someone could do an hour on each of these, but I'll stay light. With forecasting domestic water consumption, the previous example, we have lots of historical data. We have every reason to believe the future is going to look like the past, or rather the factors that influence it remain true. We understand what those factors are, what affects water consumption. Population, household wealth, number of big gardens and swimming pools, climate, weather, temperature, etc. And no, Estimating water consumption for a town doesn't affect anyone's behaviour, which is good for the forecasters. Compare that with forecasting sales of a soon-to-be-released totally new techno gadget. Number one, no historical data. Well, we could look at other similar products from past launches, but that's as good as we might get. Number two, technology preferences change fast. We have no past sales of this product, and even similar tech products might well die out in popularity very quickly if something better comes along, but no one knows. Number three, we only have a moderate understanding of the factors that contribute to a new gadget's launch. The marketing hype, declining sales of the existing technological solution, the amount of disposable income in the target market. It's not nothing. We should get and analyse that data, but it's soft. And the fourth factor, does forecasting it affect the forecast? No, in this case, probably not. That's really for things like the stock market, the price of commodities, house prices. In those cases, if there was ever an established, widely accepted belief 
where all the World Bank's governments and experts researched and published what they expected the price of gold will be in one month. People would buy and sell it immediately and the price would immediately approach that level. In that case, it would make a self-fulfilling prophecy and making the forecast has affected the actual demand. This, of course, is the fallacy of believing someone knows where the stock market will go. The experts are right about 50% of the time. Anyway, so yes, you should be forecasting, but also be aware of how accurately you can forecast your thing. To be really confident, you need to have lots of historical data, for the past data to be representative of the future, understand what factors contribute to the demand, and in making the forecast, is that going to influence the forecast or the reality? The fourth one is a bit of a catch-all, but in operations, don't really worry about the fourth one. Does the forecast affect the demand in operations, in business? Probably not. Focus on the first three. Making a good forecast is based on understanding the essence of genuine patterns and relationships in the historical data, but not blindly assuming that certain circumstances that happened in the past will happen again. It's important to spot the difference between the inevitable random fluctuations and genuine patterns that should be modelled and extrapolated into a future forecast. 